in Morgantown, West Virginia, and this town is buzzing for the home opener. A scene and an atmosphere made for a college football Saturday night. You're watching the Big 12 now on ESPN+. Plus. The home opener in Morgantown for West Virginia as the Mountaineers welcome in a Duquesne team out of the FCS that has won five conference titles in the last decade. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Morgantown. Jay Sunholzer and Noah Reed with you. Listen, we'll keep it real. Things have not been the smoothest in Morgantown the last couple of years, but there seems to be a sense of optimism for this team heading into this year. Yeah, there's a quiet confidence. It's because the offense and defensive line is the best in Neil Brown's tenure. What they've been able to do building up this program with the line play, they're open to win in the trenches this year and really win big. Certainly not a Duquesne team that's going to roll over. Jerry Schmidt in his 19th season as the head man, one of the deans of FCS football. Uh, a veteran coach, and he loves his team. And he had to be impressed with what his defense was able to do last week against Edinburgh. Five turnovers. They created four in the first quarter. They did a nice job getting their victory. Well, that's Jerry Schmidt. Neil Brown on the other side. You had a chance to catch up with him earlier today, Jay. Coach, what can we expect from Duquesne today? Well, they're a proud program. You know, they've won five out five conference championships in the last nine years. They've got some really good players on, in all three phases. So, and they're going to be excited about playing in this venue. Uh, most of their guys are regional, so we're going to get their best today. What are the positives you can take from last week's game? Well, I think our best players played really well. You know, if you look at uh, Wyatt Milan, Doug Nestor, Zach Frazier up front, C.J. Donaldson, I thought Sean Martin, Lee Coba, those guys played at an extremely high level. And what we learned is, too, is you got to take advantage of opportunities. Too many missed opportunities versus a quality football team to get the job done. What do you want to learn about your team today? I want to see how we handle our home opener. You know, these are these are major events in Morgantown, West Virginia. We get six home games a year. We want to make, make sure that we're maximizing these opportunities. First opportunity to make a, a first impression in front of our home fans. Uh, this is the first of three home games that is going to be critical in our season. And we need to put our best foot forward tonight. Good luck today. Yeah, thanks. Neil Brown and his West Virginia Mountaineers set to kick off the home opener against Duquesne. Morgantown does college football great, don't they? One of the best atmospheres in all of college football. And these players are excited for this opportunity. Duquesne won the toss. They will receive, and off we go in West Virginia's home opener. A touchback, and the Dukes have the football to start. QB won this year, Darius Parentes. He was the starter two years ago due to an injury, was in the backup spot a year ago, a spot that the coaching staff told us, Jay, was not easy for him, but he is the man this year. But he used that year to get better, really improve, and they love his leadership and his dual threat ability. He's the unquestioned guy on this team, and they're excited to see him. That was his first year in the Duquesne program that he was thrusted into the starting spot. Only started once last year, had a couple good games as the backup, and now QB won. He looks to throw on first down, scrambling right, and he fires it incomplete behind his receiver. Trey Lathan with the pressure. Uh, this is an aggressive defense for the Mountaineers. It's going to be important for the Dukes to try to keep this front seven off balance with the play action, just not able to convert. The West Virginia defense that dominated the trenches against a really good Penn State team last week. Yeah, and they were physical, and they really won some one-on-one -on -one matchups. Here's second down, Jamario Clements, and he runs right into that wall of the defensive line for West Virginia, led by Mike Lockhart. This is a group up front, all three down line, and potential NFL players. It's going to be important for the offensive line of Duquesne, which is a strength. They've got to get push. Yeah, all three of those linemen returning starters from last year's West Virginia team. And Jordan Leslie, the defensive coordinator, called it the strength of his defense. Third and eight, zips it to the sideline, and it's through the hands of the wide receiver. Looking for Teddy Awful. 
A strong throw from Parentes. The out route is not able to haul it in. That would have been a first down if they could have brought it in. Missed opportunity for the Dukes. Michael Veraducci on the putt. Preston Moss back for the mountain here. Three and out forces the punt. Preston Fox is back to take the punt, but it takes a West Virginia bounce, and it's off a Mountaineer. Duquesne saying they recovered it in West Virginia territory. Looks like the Dukes have it. Wow. It was Jacoby Spells right there in the center, number six, off his right foot, recovered by Duquesne. And if you're an FCS team, Jay, that's going to go on the road at a Power 5 school and try to put up a fight, you're going to need opportunities like this. Exactly, and to gain momentum, you have to win the special teams battle, create turnovers, and give your offense extra opportunities and gain some confidence early on in the ballgame. Duquesne forced five turnovers last week in the win, four of them in the first quarter, and they take over at the plus 46. Here's the handoff to the Missouri transfer, Taj Butts, straight up the gut inside the 40 for seven yards. Now the right side of the offensive line getting a nice push up to the second level. Sean Jones and Gary Satterwhite, the right guard and right tackle, really leading the way. With Taj Butts, he didn't play much at Missouri the last couple of years, but at this level, he's going to get a ton of snaps. Yeah, and they really trust him running the football. Also, in the passing game, he's a guy that's very versatile in this offense. A right, timeout taken by Duquesne ahead of the second and three. Well, what an interesting start to this one in Morgantown. Duquesne gets a fumble recovery, and they're trying to be the first to score on the road. Not the start you drew up if you're the Mountaineers. The defense forced a three and out, Jay, but then on the punt, it touched a West Virginia player. Fumble recovered by Duquesne, and now the Dukes with a second and short inside the 40 trying to score first. Well, how do you handle adversity? You may make a mistake on special teams. Defense has to come back out, sudden change. West Virginia's got to rely on this defense line, the front seven to get pressure. It's Taj Butts again. Back-to-back -back carries, and he's right near the marker. And here they bring the zone over towards the left, and there's Butts cutting back towards the inside, keeping his legs moving forward, falling forward for the first down. Yeah, got the three and the first down to move the chains. Both running backs in there for Darius Parentes. Fakes the handoff, flings it out to Butts, and he got clipped down immediately by Aubrey Burks. Heck of a job from Burks, the safety coming up in support. Look at the recognition here, seeing ball out to the flat, boom, makes the play, and he's the guy in the secondary. They really need him to have a strong campaign. Very talented, 5'11", 204-pound junior. They've got a lot of faith in his ability. Neil Brown called him the best defensive back they got, but they need a better performance out of him this week. Thought he struggled a little bit against Penn State last week. Second and 12 after the loss of two. Parentes has time, slings it towards Powell, pulls it in. Touchdown, Duquesne. Thirty-eight yards from Darius Parentes to DJ Powell, and it's Duquesne on the board first at West Virginia. A heck of a job from the offensive line holding up for Parentes to throw this ball. And what a play from DJ Powell coming through. And the Dukes getting off to a hot start here through the air. Offensive line, great job holding in the pocket by Parentes. And then the secondary, that was the question mark coming into the week. Were they going to improve from week one to week two? 
miscommunication the back end and the Dukes make him pay. Defensive coordinator Jordan Leslie said that was the biggest area of concern was the secondary. Too many breakdowns last week. They were worried about it again this week, and there is a review to see if this was a touchdown or not. It's all about where is that ball when he was down. This might be a good look at it. Now the question is, is there enough evidence to overturn the call. Nice job from Powell, though, you know, as he turned his back to box out the defender. I think this is going to hold as a touchdown. Yeah, I think so, too. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown, Duquesne. Well, how about that? Play stands, 38-yard touchdown pass to D.J. Powell and Jerry Schmidt's team up 6-0, less than three minutes in on the road. Perfect start. <laughs> I mean, ex exactly <laughs> what you want. You know, the first drive didn't go your way, but you got the special teams turnover, and the offense makes the defense pay. This is Brian Bruzdowitz on to attempt the point after. And it's good. Well, this is an offense that wanted to run the ball today. Also takes some shots down the field. It paid off on the second drive with a huge touchdown. Parentes to Powell for seven. Not even three full minutes in from Morgantown and Duquesne up 7-0 thanks to a West Virginia miscue. Hey, this is a Duquesne team, Jay, that has the NEC's only win ever against an FBS program. Yeah, and for them, a short drive down from Pittsburgh, and they were excited about this opportunity, especially with the way they played in week one, a big victory. They came into this ball game really liking their team, the style with which they play. Short kickoff and a fair catch called for to start West Virginia's first possession. Duquesne forced five turnovers last week, four of them in the first quarter, and it actually came on a punt after a three and out that West Virginia's defense got to stop. Yeah, and right here, West Virginia is blocking, not paying attention. Ball ricochets off the leg. And Duquesne in the right place at the right time, and it's all about taking advantage of your opponent's mistake. And going through the air, an excellent throw from Parentes to Powell. Again, that miscommunication, Noah, in the secondary. West Virginia has to clean it up. Opening drive for this West Virginia offense. This is the 240-pound running back, C.J. Donaldson, who carves out four yards. A former wide receiver and tight end who's transformed into a running back, and he's got that size still of a tight end. Uh, so impressive in the way he runs north and south. Now Garrett Green takes off. The quarterback hops out of a tackle, and he lunges for a first down. That's what makes this offense so dangerous. The Donaldson's running ability, and then Garrett Green throwing the ball and then using his legs as well outside of the pocket. Started the last couple games last year, did Garrett Green, was a backup the majority of the year, but they turn it over to him as quarterback number one this year. Green to throw quickly into the flat, and it's incomplete. He was looking for Hudson Clement, the redshirt freshman. They want Garrett Green to just not do too much, yeah. right? Be a game manager and complete the easy throws. Yeah, and, and hit your layups. And then also on critical downs, third and fourth down situations, you got to make those plays. That was a tough environment last week at Penn State. A lot of positives with Green and what he was able to do, but want to see more here in week two. Donaldson again up the middle. Great penetration from that Duquesne defensive line, just three yards to set up third and long. Here, this offensive line trying to create a wedge, and there's Donaldson's ability with his strength, 240 pounds, just to fall forward. Third and seven, wide open man on the far sideline, but it's dropped by Cortez Braham. 
who had a rather disappointing week last week, didn't have any catches, the guy they think can be the number two or three wide receiver this year. He had an outstanding fall camp, and the coaches really pleased with what he was able to do during camp, but they need him to come on, need him to be the number two behind Devin Carter and this opportunity for the Mountaineers. West Virginia picked up one first down, but the drive ultimately stalls out. That's a great punt that takes a bit of a bounce for West Virginia inside the 10. There is a flag all the way back by the punter as well, Oliver Straw. All that momentum going that way. Couldn't hold up in time. Yeah, tough to hold up. Whether this is running into the kicker or roughing the kicker is going to be big. Running into the kicker, number 14 in the defense. Penalty is declined, first down to Kate. So after the 52-yard punt, West Virginia waves it off because they have it inside the 10. Here's the contact. Good to see Straw get up off the field. How about the kick, though, with that pressure in your face, really flipping the field position? Look how intense Jerry Schmidt is. That's the guy who wants to come into Morgantown and get a win for his team. He's locked in. Not far from here in Morgantown, only about an hour and 15 minutes away in Pittsburgh, making the trip down today. In quite a different environment, Jay, than what they're used to. Yeah, beautiful atmosphere, their home field, but much larger crowd here today. The NEC, the conference that Duquesne plays in, averages about 21,000 fans total in all of their games per week. West Virginia's average attendance last year was about 57,000. Mario Clements had nowhere to go on that first down run. Really cool setup, too, for this field right on the river. Amazing. I mean, just the atmosphere there for their home games. Just a total scene. The Dukes fans really support their program. Beautiful field. All right, backed up here, second and 13. Imperative for Duquesne to protect the football and handle the pressure from West Virginia. Second and three, hit as he throws, looking for awful on the near side. But Parentes got smacked by Trey Lathan. Lathan just flies off the edge. Look at 19, going to the backfield, unblocked. Makes Parentes pay. Woo. How would you like to take that hit? You've got to be tough in the pocket. He knew Lathan was coming, just able to get it off here. I expect more pressure here on third down. Morgantown faithful coming to life on a third and 13 at the six yard line. Quick throw into the far sideline that is hauled in, but way short of the marker by DJ Powell who had the touchdown for Duquesne. Uh, just a safe pass and West Virginia electing not to bring pressure, only rushing three guys falling back into coverage. Smart play by Parentes. Hey, a punt is a isn't a bad thing in this situation. I hope your special teams unit can flip the field position. The one thing Duquesne can't afford to do, though, is get into second and 13, third and long. Can't I mean, you got you can't get behind the chains. Uh, they have to have positive gains on first down. Another short punt. West Virginia starts this drive in Duquesne territory after a 37-yard punt. It's 
So how do you respond to adversity, right? That's what you talked about after the fumble recovery led to a touchdown for Duquesne. How does West Virginia handle this? Well, I think over on the sideline, the offense has been challenged, saying, hey, listen, guys, let's get it going. That drive was in us, that first drive. Let's come out here, play with some confidence. Let's have some chemistry. Let's establish the line of scrimmage. And then they want to take some shots down the field. They want to, but after they establish the run yeah. first, right? And, and that's the key is to set up the play action pass. Bring those linebackers up and then go over the top. Jalen Anderson motion out of the backfield. Green keeps it and bounces down to the 42. Second and six. Green scanning, taking a shot to the end zone. Has Fox, but it's bobbled incomplete. Well, this is what we expected. Shots down the field. Not able to bring it in. Missed opportunity again for the Mountaineers. Offensive line protection. Green all day to throw. Outstanding job up front. Have to bring that one in. Had a potential touchdown last week. That was dropped. Had one here as well from Preston Fox. Here's a third down run near the marker for C.J. Donaldson. Do they give him enough? C.J. Barnes is saying no. Should be fourth down, but the chains are moving. Donaldson has such power when he runs. He also has the rare agility for a big man going side to side. And then that keen awareness of where the first down marker is falling forward. Nice job picking up the first down. Ruling on the field of a first down is under further review. So rule to first down. They're going to look at it again, though, to see. West Virginia down 7 nothing at home. About Media timeout. halfway through the first quarter here in Morgantown. Virginia. Hey, not a bad start for Duquesne up 7-0 on the road. And if this kind of gives any context, Jay, they average 1,500 a game at their games. Total for the NEC schools about 21,000. West Virginia last year, almost 60,000 average attendance. Completely different atmosphere. You wouldn't know it, though the way this first quarter is going for the Dukes. West Virginia is driving, though, with a first down inside the 40. Jaheim White, the true freshman, with a stiff arm, and he got ushered out of bounds. Didn't play last week, Jay. Jaheim White coming back from a quad injury, but they want to get him a lot of touches today. The coaches love his talent, his potential, what he can do in this offense. He's got elite speed. Also, they'll be able to move him in the formation and use him in the passing game. Second and 13, Anderson got maybe back to the original line of scrimmage, but it's still going to bring up a third and long for the Mountaineers. And an echo of boos coming in from the Morgantown faithful. The strength of this defensive unit is the defensive line for the Dukes. They did the job there, and now expect to see pressure on third and long situations. Here's the handoff. Jalen Anderson has the first down and gets angled out of bounds near the 20. On third and 10, they got 15 yards from Anderson for a first down. Yeah, nice vision from Anderson running the ball. Look at 87, the tight end. Good job there from Cole Taylor clearing out the path. In the offensive line, the wide receivers, tight ends, everybody working together, pushing their man down the field. West Virginia knocking on the door of the red zone. Down 7-0 in the first quarter. A little end around. Here's Rodney Gallagher, another freshman for West Virginia. Cuts it upfield, picks up some positive yardage inside the red zone. The coaching staff really likes the freshman class. And 
Gallagher was one of the guys we expected to get action today, try to get involved in the game plan. Nice job just reading the blocks on the reverse, getting what he could up the middle. He was the Pennsylvania High School Male Athlete of the Year last year. Played quarterback, running back, and wide receiver, and you could see the speed on that play. Second down, Grain, first completion of the day to Hudson Clement and a West Virginia touchdown. First career catch for Hudson Clement goes for a West Virginia touchdown. I love the play call going with the play action pass. And Neil Brown noticing the linebackers coming up to stop the run. Decided to take the shot over the top to your big six foot four wide receiver. Michael Hayes' point extra goes through for an eight-play, 46-yard drive and capped off by a Hudson Clement touchdown. Well, I love the head fake from Clement. Looked like he was going outside, then broke it to the post route. There's a nice ball fake to Anderson. And then Green throwing a strike right in the lap of Clement. Clement boxed out the defender. Nice job shielding him for a touchdown. Those are the kind of plays that the coaching staff was telling us yesterday that they need Garrett Green to make, right? The correct read, easy throw. And, and those rhythm plays where he just goes on his back foot, goes where he's going with the ball, and the wide receivers get open for him. He has the accuracy, the trust with this wide receiver group. If he can go in rhythm, they expect success in the passing game. Touchback to start the drive for Duquesne. Nothing but the smiles on the face of the freshman, Hudson Clement, who was the Randy Moss winner for best wide receiver in the state of West Virginia a couple years ago. Darius Parentes and Duquesne taking over. Tied at seven after the West Virginia touchdown and allowing this Morgantown faithful to come to life a little bit. Drive starts at the 25. Taj Butts, patient run, and he extends it out to the 28 for three yards. We talk about positive gains on first down. Nothing big, they're only three yards. It's much better than being second and 13 or second and 10. Now you give yourself an opportunity where you can run it or throw it here on second down. Yeah, we've seen a couple times this first quarter, second down and 12, third and 13s for Duquesne. So you get three yards on first down. It's better than what it's been the last couple drives. Another handoff to Butts, spinning down to the 20, or the 32 rather, and makes this a third down much more manageable. I like how Anthea Doria, the offensive coordinator for Duquesne, is calling this game. Staying on the ground, trusting your offensive line. Make one man miss. Nice job there, falling forward. And now a big third down coming up. West Virginia needs their star defensive end, Sean Martin, to step up here. This is their best player on defense. Third and three, Parentes to throw. Flushing out to the left, zips it. It's caught by Joey Isabella, and he skirts out for a first down. Nine yards to move the chains. Isabella has a knack for making plays, and there was pressure. Sean Martin trying to chase down. Parentes couldn't get there in time. Look at 91 from the right side of the screen. 
just hunting them down, not able to get there. And Isabella just sitting in the zone area. Nice job coming back to his quarterback. And Prentes scanning the field and feeling the rush and getting out of the pocket to make the play. New set of downs. Parentes wants to take a shot after it to Powell. Tipped up in the air and batted incomplete. Beanie Bishop had the coverage for West Virginia. Bishop, one of the veterans in the secondary. Another guy, Mountaineers, need to continue to step up. Need big plays from him. Nice job knocking that ball down. Yeah, Bishop in his first year with West Virginia, but his sixth year of college football after spending four years with Western Kentucky and one last year with the Gophers in Minnesota. But stretching to the edge, got wrapped up by the ankle. Aubrey Burks off the edge, makes the tackle. Well, second time we've called Burks' name. Just reading the run, sifting through, coming out on the edge to make the play. So important to be physical and run support. Burks is one of the best. Neil Brown challenged Burks to be better this week than he was against Penn State last week. He's got a couple tackles in this first quarter already. Third and long for the Dukes. Parentes quickly fires, sideline pulled in by Teddy Awful for a first down. Beautiful throw and Awful getting behind the sticks. Sharp break on the out route. And enough time to throw. And the defensive backs for West Virginia, they have to know where the first down marker is. You can't keep backpedaling. You've got to know, hey, that's where the first down marker is. Make sure you stay on the hip of Teddy Awful, nice play by the offense converting. Previous play, it's under further review. We're targeted. So they blow the play dead here to check on targeting. Parentes got hit, the quarterback for Duquesne, on that last play right here. Tyron Bradley, number eight right there for West Virginia, is the one that hit him in the helmet. Bradley goes high on the hit. Yeah, this throw beautiful to the outside. Teddy Awful getting right behind the sticks, coming back to the ball. And here's the contact up towards the helmet. Hard to argue against that. Yeah, it's going to go against West Virginia. After further review, there is no foul for targeting. Result of the play was a first down for West Virginia. Wow, no targeting on that Surprise. last play. First down. Bradley gets to stay in the game. Well, Bradley's one of those linebackers that is going to get playing time today on the second unit. Big kid, six foot three, 255 pounds, a lot of talent. They expect big things from him. Two third down conversions already on this drive for du Duquesne as we're about to see the seventh play of the drive and the first in West Virginia territory. Parentes has a clean pocket, deep to Powell, has a touchdown today. It was intercepted. Beanie Bishop picked it off for the Mountaineers. Really on the field, it's an interception. First down, West Virginia. Just amazing. Wow, what a play. The focus of Bishop just wrestles the ball away from Powell. A 
amazing play. Wow. There's a secondary challenge this week coming through and making a play. And just the body control to hold on to that ball, stay in bounds, rip it away. Takeaway for West Virginia starts the drive on their six. C.J. Donaldson trying to turn the corner, didn't get much before he was stopped by Ty Howard, the linebacker. And Neil Brown has to be happy there. There's a competitive play, 50-50 ball. You challenge your secondary and Bishop making the play, and that's an improvement area Neil Brown really focused on this week during practice. Well, Neil Brown told us that Beanie Bishop had a great week last week tackling, but not so much in coverage. Well, that wasn't bad yeah. right there. <laughs> Green keeps it rolling right. Ran into some trouble. His flat or his hat helmet comes off. A flag comes flying in on the face mask. As Green's running towards the First outside. Down. Face mask. Defense number six. 15 yards at the end of the run. Automatic first down. Number Easy. six for West Virginia can stay in the game. Easy call, and that fired up Green. As Jaden Johnson called for the face mask on what otherwise would have set up a third and long. First down for West Virginia after the face mask penalty. Green looking for his tight end, Cole Taylor, the LSU transfer, but he overshoots him. And Rizzo, the linebacker, had the coverage. Well, the coaching staff really wanted to involve Taylor here today. Two catches last week against Penn State. When we talked to the staff, they said he has NFL talent. Right he's now. A guy, right now, and he's a guy with his friend, six foot seven, his speed, the agility, he can go deep or really control the center of the field. Chad Scott, the offensive coordinator, said he can be as good as he wants to be. There is nobody, no safety that can cover him one-on-one. -on -one. Green, deep shot, looking for Clement again, pulls it in for a first down. Thirty-nine yards from Garrett Green to Hudson Clement. And now the Mountaineers really hitting their deep shots. Good job by Clement shielding off the defender. They said they wanted to go tempo. You see that here. C.J. Donaldson turning the corner, cuts back up field, and inside the thirty-five. Donaldson making a nice block and then Clement with that quickness getting ahead of the defender and that is a tough play over the shoulder catch focused all the way in. Three catches in this first quarter for Hudson Clement the first three catches of his career. And CJ Donaldson is down right now for West Virginia not a good sign if you're a Mountaineers fan. You're starting running back and workhorse is down on the ground. There's a pass protection, goes low. You see, looks like his legs did the splits almost. Such a tough physical kid. Hopefully he'll be okay. That happened on the pass play, the play before, and then he still ran it on yeah. that last play. Just amazing toughness. Former tight end turn running back. You know he takes a lot of hits and he's physical. 
Uh, he takes pride in pass protection from his tight end days. He's so versatile, whether it's pass protection, running the ball, using his hands out of the backfield. He can do it all and quickly as a sophomore, already becoming a team leader. Second down and six. Green sits in the pocket, goes to the sideline, incomplete, looking for Jaheim White, the running back. One-on-one -on -one situation with White, young freshman, only five foot seven. They feel like he can win in passing situations, just not able to convert there. Nice coverage in the secondary. You think the spot in the field that you're out right now, Jay, this might be four down territory if they pick up two or three yards? I think here the mindset is, hey, we've got two downs to pick up six yards. I would go for it. You don't get it here. Green dumps it off. That's caught by Taylor, the tight end. They won't need to worry about a fourth down. Great play call with the misdirection, the ball fake, and then you bring Taylor across the formation. That's so difficult to defend. Good throw from Green. Might be the final play of this first quarter. West Virginia looks like they're content going to the second quarter. Tie game driving down the field just outside of the red zone. This one has certainly been entertaining in Morgantown. Duquesne jumped on the board early to take a 7-0 lead, but West Virginia bounces back with a touchdown, and they're trying to take the lead at the start of the second quarter. Duquesne and West Virginia tied at 7, but Neil Brown and the Mountaineers driving near the red zone right now. Jay, a chance to take their first lead of the day. I like how they've responded after that special teams mistake where they gave the ball back to Duquesne. The offense playing with more confidence. There's more rhythm to the group, and they're really doing a nice job with their balance and the play calling with the run and the pass. Starting running back C.J. Donaldson went out a couple plays ago. Haven't seen him in the game since. Green flips it off. Taylor with another catch. His second of the drive. Shakes away from one. Lowers the shoulder and plows inside the 10. First and goal now for West Virginia after a 15-yard reception by Cole Taylor. I think he can be the best tight end in the Big 12. He's a difference maker. Tight end screen. They set it up for him. Fall and wall, and then Taylor gets the ball. Makes you pay. Anderson with a West Virginia touchdown. <laughs> Two quick plays after the start of the quarter, and Jalen Anderson punches it in with a nine-yard run. A deep running back room, so much talent with that group, and I like how Green has maintained his composure. A couple drops early on, Noah. Hey, still confident, trusting your guys, and now the Mountaineers really doing a nice job moving the ball down the field, and this offense is clicking. A nine-play drive that went nearly the length of the field after the interception by Beanie Bishop, and the nine-yard run caps it off by Jalen Anderson. 14 unanswered by West Virginia after Duquesne jumped out to a 7-0 lead. Mountaineers starting to click. Well, historically, the last few years, West Virginia has had no problem with their FCS opponents, outscoring them 187-17 to 17 combined. But they're in a little bit more of a battle early in the second quarter with Duquesne today. Yeah, domination in the past. Duquesne's come out ready to play. We got off to a good start. I like how this offense, though, knows. moving the ball. Talk about the balance with the play calling, the run in the pass, really keeping the defense on their heels. Fair catch called for. Duquesne starts the drive at the 25. 
both teams are taking advantage of other teams' miscues, right? The special teams mistake by West Virginia led, the Duke, led to the Duquesne touchdown. West Virginia gets an interception, and they turn that into seven points. And that's why it's so important, the turnover battle. I mean, you don't want to give the other team, your opponent, easy opportunities and which team is going to play cleaner here throughout the rest of the ball game. That's got to be a focus area and for Parentes. Be careful with the ball. Make the right reads. Don't try to force the issue. Take what the defense gives you. So their lone touchdown drive was on a short field, 46-yard touchdown drive after a fumble recovery. Start of this drive for Parentes and company. Hand off, and Jamario Clements got pounded by Mike Lockhart. Loss of three. Lockhart played his best game of his West Virginia career last week against Penn State. And here the penetration, the domination up front, beaming his man with leverage, staying low and flying in the backfield. Lockhart, a Georgia Tech transfer where he spent three years, now his fifth year of college football, having spent the last two with West Virginia, and another one of those guys that just has so much experience. Yeah, an anchor in the middle of this defense. Six foot three, 308 pounds with quickness. Again, Clements hopping through that defensive line, and he got back to the original line of scrimmage to bring up third and ten. Third and long situations. West Virginia has not brought pressure, trusting the front four to get to Parentes. Here, just has to be careful, make sure you read the defense and try to force the ball if it's not there. Brown in motion into the slot. Third and long. Parentes scanning, sprinting right, throws on the run, looking for awful, and it's batted incomplete. Malachi Ruffin had the coverage. Three and out. West Virginia's defense gets off the field. There's a twist up front, zone pressure from West Virginia. Parentes used his legs to roll out. Outstanding job by the secondary, though, knocking the ball down, staying tight in coverage. Here's Preston Fox sprinting up on the return, and a nice return, too, inside the 45-yard line. Short punt of 30 yards, and Fox returned at 13. So Aiden Garns right there, number eight for Decane. Not only a great football player, Jay, but he's a hero. And you don't use that term lightly, but back in January, he donated bone marrow and saved the life of a 27-year-old. Just an amazing kid and a blessing to others, saving a life, and, and just what he's able to do on the field is impressive. Off the field, he's even better. C.J. Donaldson back in the game as he charges forward for six yards. And to make an already remarkable story, as you get a look at him as he's getting prepped for it back in January, saved a life by doing that part of the Be the Match program at Duquesne. And to make that already cool story even better, Jay, his defensive coordinator, Mike Craig, was the one that started the Be The Match program because he beat cancer as a 12-year-old child. Just amazing. Green, deep ball looking, end zone, incomplete. He was looking for Jeremiah Aaron. Well, we had a feeling West Virginia was going to take some shots, and here they go back. Almost able to haul it in. Nice coverage. Knocked the ball loose. Jalen Carson just got a hand in there to disrupt what would have been a touchdown. Third down. Donaldson shakes away from one, but he got swarmed by Ty Howard. 
fourth down after the loss of four and a great tackle by the linebacker. Howard, one of the defensive leaders. Now West Virginia going to stay out on the field. Kind of in no man's land here. They're going to go for it. Fourth and eight from the 41. Watch Cole Taylor in the slot. Green zips it over the middle. Jeremiah Aaron down to his sliding incomplete. Tried to say he pulled it in. The officials were quick, quick to say no. Early on the field, the incomplete pass. Media timeout. West Virginia's drive stalls out. Duquesne taking over after this. Mike Craig and his defense off to a great start. They've held West Virginia to 14 points, keeping the offense in it. And Duquesne's offense back out on the field. Loss of two on the run by Taj Butts. But Mike Craig, we just told you the story about Aiden Garns, who saved a life by donating bone marrow in January. It's all because of Mike Craig, who survived Hodgkin's lymphoma as a 12-year-old, started the Be The Match program at Duquesne, and because of that, Garns ended up being somebody's match. It's amazing, and he's so humble. We didn't even know about that when we initially talked to him, and just what he's been able to do for others' lives, and Garns, what he was able to do to save a life, just a beautiful story. Here's Parentes rolling out to the right. Deep heave to Powell, lunging out for it, and it's incomplete. Parentes led him maybe just a little bit too much. Missed opportunity. Powell gets behind the secondary. A deep post route. And the eyes of the secondary looking in at the quarterback. Powell had a step. That's the third time, Jay, that Parentes has taken a deep shot to Powell. The first yeah. one went for a 39-yard touchdown. Yeah, yeah, they're testing the secondary. All right, the one touchdown, they're continuing to look down the field, go towards the secondary. Three touchdowns in the first two weeks for Powell now. Parentes getting chased out of the pocket again, looks for Powell wide open at the 30 and turning up field before he got yanked down at the 27 by Anthony Wilson. It is hard to believe, Jay, that this is D.J. Powell's first year in the program because him and Parentes have such a connection. Oh, it's amazing what he's able to do here, just the chemistry between those two. A busted play, miscommunication on the back end. Parentes gets outside of the pocket, using his legs. I love how he keeps his eyes up the field looking for Powell. 34 yards to set up first down in West Virginia territory. Looking for a touchdown, and it's too tall for Jalen Cooper. And know all these deep throws down the field are created because the offensive line for Duquesne, they're holding up just enough. Now, Prentez has gotten outside of the pocket a couple times when the pass rush has come. The O-line is doing their job, allowing the staff to open up their playbook and really look for deep shots and also in the intermediate areas. Anthony Doran, the offensive coordinator for Duquesne, told us that Darius Parentes is so poised at all times. Never rattled. Even when he's facing that pressure of West Virginia, he's handled it really well tonight. Sees pressure again. Zips it over the middle to Keyshawn Brown. Makes the guy miss. Still on his feet and down inside the five. Twenty-nine yards from Parentes to Brown. A couple big strikes for Duquesne. Have them on the doorstep of scoring. Brown's only five foot eight. His ability with yards after the catch is what makes him special. Catches this ball, boom! Immediately turns upfield, goes side to side, and then north and south to get inside of the ten. Chance for Duquesne to tie the game up about halfway through the second quarter. Parentes to the air again, caught. There is a flag. It's a touchdown for Teddy Awful for the moment. Pat 
pass interference. Offense number six. 15 yards for the previous spot. Still first down. Keyshawn Brown called for the offensive pass interference to wave off the touchdown. It was a rub route here. See Brown. Yep, good call. Clips the shoulder. Bobbery Burks. And if you just kind of back off there, you won't get the flag. You hit that right shoulder of Burks. Easy call. So tough break for Duquesne. They had a touchdown with an extra point. They could have tied it up. Instead, you're looking at a first and goal from the 20. What a relatively clean game. Only two combined penalties through the first quarter and a half. Parentes has time in the pocket. Going to Powell again. Tried to go to the back shoulder, but it's incomplete. Malachi Ruffin had the coverage. No safety help over the top. One-on-one -on -one situation. Parentes looking for his guy. Back shoulder. Ball sailed a little bit. Nice coverage, though, on the back end by Ruffin. Sixth play of the drive coming up. Parentes facing some heat, dumps it off. It's caught by Quan Easterling, the tight end, but he had nowhere to go, even lost a yard. Jared Bartlett, the star linebacker, led the charge for West Virginia. Sean Martin, number 91, right up the middle. This pressure in the face. It's a tight end screen. Easterling had nowhere to go. That D-line stayed at home. They read it. There's Martin, so good against Penn State last week. Projected to be a high round pick in the NFL draft. He's really come out strong here to start off the season. Third and goal from the 21. Parentes over the middle looking for Brown, batted incomplete. It was Aubrey Burks again who's made a couple nice plays in this first half. Uh, he's been the best guy in the secondary. Physical and run support coming up around the line of scrimmage and now defending his area. No pass interference call here. The back end two, sifting through the coverage, knocking the ball loose, staying on the hip, and forcing a fourth down. It's a 39-yard field goal coming up for Brian Bruzdowitz. Missed his only attempt last week. This one from 39 yards is true. They had to settle for a field goal, but Duquesne pulls within four halfway through the second quarter in Morgantown. The theme of the day today in college football, especially in this part of the country and the Virginias and the Carolinas has been delayed games because of weather and we are not immune to that here in Morgantown. The storm has been spotted less than eight miles from us. So for the moment, this game is suspended in about 30 minutes. We will come back and give you an update and hopefully we are really close to playing football then. But either way, half hour, we'll give you an update here in Morgantown right before the delay to make it 14 to 10. And when you look at these stats, everything feels pretty even right now, Jay. Yeah, a close ball game because each team has had their moments. Duquesne coming out, very positive start midway through the first quarter. Then West Virginia starting to take over and finding their spot in the game. And Neil Brown has to be pleased with how his offense really started getting it going here, mixing in the run of the pass. Yeah, had back-to-back -to -back touchdown drives after falling behind 7-0. Duquesne pieced together a nice offensive drive that resulted in three points. So they're set to kick it away after an hour and 52-minute delay here in Morgantown. West Virginia, after the fair catch, opens the drive at the 25-yard line. Garrett Green out there after his first touchdown pass of the season. Did not throw one last week against Penn State. Had the opening touchdown today for the Mountaineers to Hudson Clement. So 
He's thrown for 79 and a touchdown. He's ran for 12 more yards. He is a dual threat guy, but he hasn't had the chance to use the legs very much today. Here's a handoff and a great run on the first play. Enough for a first down after 12 yards from Jalen Anderson. A positive start here on the ground. The offensive line getting to the second level. Look at the push up front, outstanding block by their best O lineman, Zach Frazier, to allow Anderson to get north and south. Last year as a freshman, Anderson put together a really nice season, played in just six games, but ran for almost 300 yards in total. Green pulls it on the keeper, and he got sandwiched down at the 40 by Rizzo. Good job out on the edge from Duquesne, staying at home. Green thought he could get around the corner. Nice closing speed, though, to bring him down. He can be pretty unpredictable at times, Garrett Green, because of that ability to run as much as he passes. Yeah, he's got a shiftiness to the way he runs. He does a nice job also manipulating the pocket when he throws. Here goes Anderson. Shakes away from one, breaks a couple, has the edge. And Garrett Green, the quarterback, planted a little bit of block. Might be coming back, though. Holding. Offense, number 54. Ten-yard penalty. Still second down. And that's Zach Frazier, the All-American center, called for the holding. As this ball goes over towards the left, there's Frazier trying to seal off the edge. Uh, just holding the right shoulder pad. They caught him. It's the first West Virginia penalty today, about a quarter and a half into the game. Green to throw on second and 17. Once the deep ball has a man behind everybody. Hudson Clement with his second touchdown of the day. yards from Garrett Green to Hudson Clement and West Virginia's lead is 10. Green and Clement, they've been clicking tonight. Outstanding job from Green recognizing the coverage. Duquesne showing pressure, they fall back. Look at Green looking over towards the left, holding the safety, coming back to Clement. Perfect throw, hitting him in stride. And then Clement does the rest. 123 yards for Hudson Clement receiving today, a pair of touchdown catches. And without Devin Carter, who's the number one wide receiver for West Virginia today, Hudson Clement is making himself a name. We have a new star wide receiver for West Virginia. Last week, no catches against Penn State. This week, a different story. Three catches, two touchdowns by the freshman. West Virginia, 21, Duquesne, 10. Hudson Clement coming out here. This is coming out party, Noah. Three catches, 123 yards, two touchdowns, only a freshman. And that chemistry he's shown in green tonight, it, it's been something special. But Devin Carter not playing thus far. West Virginia needed somebody to step up, and young freshman is really putting a stamp on this game. Yeah, Neil Brown might have fight and found a new guy for this wide receiver group for West Virginia. Three catches, 123 yards, two touchdowns for Hudson Clement. West Virginia coaching staff told us yesterday, Jay, that they wanted to take some shots in this game, and we've seen it a couple times. Yeah, and they told us the truth. They were looking to throw the ball down the field. Clement had one-on-one -on -one coverage. I love the way he runs routes, faking the DB inside, going back towards the outside, and then the top end speed. He just wins over the top with pure athleticism. Beautiful throw right into the lap of Clement. Darius Parentes has been pretty solid before the rain delay, 114 yards through the air, threw a touchdown to start the scoring early in the first quarter, less than three minutes in. And it's his first drive in more than two hours because of the rain delay. Gives to Jamario Clements, 
He gets swarmed immediately. Might have even been a loss of a yard. This front seven for West Virginia can be overwhelming. And right here, look at the penetration, the pad level, and the power of that defensive line just getting into the backfield, nowhere to run. Yeah, Anthony Doran, the offensive coordinator for Duquesne, said, we know if we have any chance to win this game, we have to take shots because that West Virginia front seven is so tough to run against. Isabella in motion to the slot. Second and 11. Clements again, great hop, but right into the defense, and it was Sean Martin who stuck him in the ground. Martin really making an impact just with his length, that athleticism, 6'5", 290 pounds, and he plays so hard. He has a nose for the ball. You see him here just working his technique, staying on the backside, and then running down the line of scrimmage, nowhere to go. Holding that back shoulder for the possible quarterback run, seeing the ball go towards the left, and he took off. A guy who will probably be a second-day draft pick in the NFL draft, second or third-round guy. Third and long. Parentes gets it out to the far sideline, and it's batted away. He was looking for Teddy Awful. We had talked about coming back from this rain delay with a lot of the crowd having filed out that maybe that was advantage Duquesne. But, yeah. Jay, with this start, you're talking about a three-play touchdown drive for West Virginia and now a three and out for their defense. Mountaineers looking good. Well, I was wrong. I mean, right now, <laughs> West Virginia playing with a sense of urgency, and you can tell they want to put their foot on the gas pedal here coming out after the break. Here's Fox from inside his own 30 on the return. Cleared the 40-yard line, so good starting field position for West Virginia. 13-yard return for Preston Fox. Now for West Virginia coming back out here, I would continue to test the secondary. You're having success throwing the ball deep. Test this defensive back group for Duquesne. Your quarterback's in a rhythm. Green's throwing the ball well, and that chemistry with Clement has been special. Drive starts at the 43 for West Virginia. And they got him to jump. Here's a free play. Jalen Anderson gets five yards. And off to Jalen Anderson, leg of the player. Offside, defense, defense. five-yard penalty. Five penalty, still first down. First down. Good job with the hard count by Green. The offensive line staying still, and then here's the free play. Now Anderson just has an opportunity. This has been a clean game, very few penalties so far, Noah. Only one on West Virginia, three on Duquesne. Green quickly on the screen. He connects with Cortez Braham, his first catch of the season. That goes for three yards. And I like that design to get Braham involved in the offense, get him the ball. And we talked about how good of a camp he had. They need him to step up. West Virginia going tempo. Again, a throw to the sideline, but it was beyond the intended target. Rodney Gallagher, the freshman, third and two. There is a flag on the play. Nelson player downfield, number 66 to the offense. Five-yard penalty, still second down. Now that's Jaquay Hubbard, the backup right guard for West Virginia. C.J. Donaldson, the lone back next to Green. First time we've seen him since the restart of the rain delay. Got shaken up a little bit beforehand. 
Fake it to him. Green rolls right, zips it on the run. That's caught. Hudson Clement again. He's got the first down before he gets wrangled up and ripped to the ground. Hudson Clement, the receiver, one down by number eight. Duquesne bringing pressure off the left side. Perfect play design with Green rolling out towards the right. Accurate throw to Clement again. Fakes the screen, takes a shot, has him open again. It's Hudson Clement for his third touchdown catch. Touchdown, it's the coming out party for Hudson Clement. Love to see guys step up when they're given an opportunity. Just imagine the confidence, what's going on right now in Hudson Clement's heart with the big impact he's had tonight, stepping up and just making a name for himself and when his team's needed plays, he's won in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Back-to-back -back touchdown drives for West Virginia that last just three plays. Faked it to Gallagher, drew the defense up, and Hudson Clement was wide open. Yeah, it was stutter and go, and they faked the quick pass to the outside. Green used his eyes, sold it, and then went over the top. Bust in communication in the secondary. Easy pitch and catch for the touchdown. He's a popular guy over on the sideline. <laughs> yeah, that's three. <laughs> you can tell when your teammates are genuinely happy for you. What a game. We're still only in the second quarter. That's hard to believe, isn't it? Uh, uh, unbelievable. <laughs> My math's not too good, but he's uh, he's on track for uh, maybe over 400 yards. The way he's playing so far, what a what a start to the game. Look at that ECU degree on full display. <laughs> I was gonna pull out my calculator, but <laughs> try to do it quick. It wasn't the prettiest of starts, if we're being honest, Jay, for yeah. West Virginia today. A uh, quarter and a half in for Neil Brown's team. It was 14 to 10. They were struggling, but from the resume of this game, two touchdown drives of just three plays. They've done it quickly. Well, still plenty of time. Not, not a finished story here for West Virginia, though. The adjustments they've made and after adversity struck, how do you respond? Neil Brown's got to be very pleased, and I know he wants more. Hudson Clement, red-shirted last year. Today, had his first catch ever. It went for a touchdown, and since then, all he's done is five catches, 177 yards, and three touchdowns. He's been on fire, and these aren't short routes. These are deep goes. He's winning over the top, one-on-one -on -one coverage, all the deep balls, and just his ability with his route running to create separation. I mean, I know this is only one half a play, he is going to be a weapon in this offense, and you always want somebody to step up when they're given a chance, and Neil Brown's found himself a new star wide receiver. Two years ago, he was the West Virginia Offensive Player of the Year and won the Randy Moss Award, which is the best wide receiver in West Virginia high school. Parentes has time, rolls right, lofts it over to his target, Teddy Awful, but it's incomplete. Duquesne now has to find a way to gain some momentum. Just get a drive going here. Pick up a couple first downs. Give their defense a break. How do they do that, you think? Well, I, I think I think you've got to run the ball. I, 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 it's going to be tough to continue to throw the ball against this defense. I think you have to have a balance and try to have success on first down. That's the only way is to make sure you play a clean game but also have second and third down situations that are manageable. They will run it. This is Taj Butts, the Mizzou transfer, who just got back to the line of scrimmage for no gain. When they get positive yardage on first down, even if it's two or three yards, that usually sets them up for a good drive. But when they get behind the chains, it's tough. Yeah, when they can get it going north and south, they give themselves a chance. And it's easier said than done. Again, the strength of this defense is the front seven. But if they can run it, then it's going to help out in the pass game. Now third and ten situation. This is where you expect pressure from West Virginia and where they can bring some of their zone blitz schemes.
West Virginia sends four on third down. Parentes goes down. Aubrey Burks, the safety with the sack, and it's back-to-back -back three and outs for this West Virginia defense. This coverage was disguised. First charge, time out of the half. West Virginia. The pressure was shown off the right. It dropped back, and then on the opposite side, the corner blitz. And it came home. Nice job there disguising it. And then Aubrey Burks, we've called his name numerous times. What a physical presence he is in the secondary. Jared Bartlett in there as well, the linebacker for West Virginia. And this feels like a different Mountaineers team from before the rain delay until now. But just a different sense of intensity. I mean, they've come out here on fire, and you can tell there was a speech given to them during that break. And sometimes you need a little wake-up call. Sometimes, you know, when you have a situation that's tough with the weather delay, it takes, you know, it takes leaders to step up to get the team revved up and get going. And you can tell that they came out here and they really wanted to put their foot on the gas pedal and really start off on the right foot. Michael Baraducci with the punt. Fox lets it bounce. It does take a Duquesne roll down near the 35. You always have to keep in mind who the opponent is, right? West Virginia's going to play teams this year that are much more talented than Duquesne. But what is starting to impress you over the past couple drives for West Virginia? Well, it's just the, the way they're flying around the ball on defense. You can tell that they're playing hard. And then on offense, it's just this sense of, hey, let's let it all go. Let's be aggressive. Let's take shots down the field. And, and Garrett Green is throwing the ball accurately coming out here, and it just looks like they're a confident group that's playing with nothing to lose. And, and when you make so many positive gains against Penn State last week, even though you don't have the result, coming into this game, they really wanted to make a lot of improvements and let it show. And it, it wasn't that way in the first quarter, but now you can see this team playing at a high le higher level. Well, he's trying to make sure 84 stays involved. Hudson Clement, who's got 177 yards and three receiving touchdowns today, but threw it a little bit too tall for him on first down. Well, Duquesne's going to have to bring one safety. To, they need to triple cover number 84 right now because <laughs> that's where Green is going with the ball. There's C.J. Donaldson. Patient run. Stiff arms a defender, and he runs himself out of bounds at the 41. Antonio Epps with the tackle. Zone read. Donaldson staying patient. Duquesne doing a nice job on the edge, holding up. Nowhere to go for Donaldson. Third and medium situations. This is where you want to look for your big tight end. Taylor and Clement obviously has been a force tonight. Something over the middle of the field. Three wide receivers to the top, including Cole Taylor, the tight end. Fake the throw, delayed handoff, and Donaldson gets down to the 45, about two yards shy of the first down mark. They spread the field and disguised it as a passing play and then tried to sneak in the draw. And West Virginia's offense is going to stay out on the field. You like that? I do. I like the aggressive mindset. And West Virginia bringing in their fullback, Luke Hamilton. He's a thumper, number 35. Up in the wing formation, Taylor in line as well. Fourth and two. Donaldson right at the marker and see if they give him the first down. That's close. And they are signaling first down. So Luke Hamilton, the tight end fullback, did his job. He's who led the way. Watch 35 here, cut across. Look at this block. Boom. <laughs> Just shove his man in <laughs> four. Follows Hamilton. New set of downs now. Green stepping up in the pocket. He can do this. Takes off. First down. Wrapped up and torn down by Gianni Rizzi. He makes it so tough on a defense. Going back, scanning the field and taking off. And he'll burn you up the middle. Nice job reading the coverage and then using his legs to pick up positive yards. There is a player down for Duquesne right now. It's Kevin Kersinger, the defensive end. He 
back-to-back -back touchdown drives for West, West Virginia and driving inside the 35 with a chance to really try to put this one out of hand right before halftime. See, 97, Kurzinger. It's like he fell hard on that right shoulder. You see, he initially gets up, and you can see him holding his arm as Green finishes off the run. It's a tough way to fall. Yeah, immediately went for that right shoulder. He's one of their best defensive players. Veteran on the defensive line. Three-year starter out of State College. Duquesne defensive line that returned all three starters from a year ago. A big strength in that defensive unit for Jerry Schmidt and company. Final minute before halftime. West Virginia up 18 with a chance to make it three straight scoring drives. Into the near sideline that's caught by Preston Fox. His first catch today. Enough for a first down. Well, Green's got a clean pot. The offensive line, outstanding job of building a wall for Green and then he's accurate throwing the ball down the field. He's starting to get everybody involved in the pass game too. Zips it, end zone, caught again. Preston Fox, touchdown Mountaineers. It is turning into a rout in Morgantown right before halftime. And they've turned it on. Garrett Green playing loose. Love the way he's throwing the ball, being assertive, looking at his reads, seeing the open man. And there's Fox just straight up the field, threw him open, the back shoulder throw. A nice play, being aggressive, and reading the safeties and making it happen. <laughs> 21 unanswered for West Virginia, and they've all come after the rain delay. This is what we expected. This offense to be throwing the ball down the field at the beginning of the game. Now, it took a little while, and you're going to have some tough spots, some patches where maybe things aren't working out well. I like how West Virginia responded. Midway through the first quarter, it just felt like they got together as a group, started clicking. Garrett Green has been accurate, and these aren't short passing throws. These are deep balls down the field, and you can just see down on the sideline the rapport he has with his wide receivers. Well, this is what has happened after our almost two-hour lightning delay. West Virginia, 70-yard touchdown catch. Three and out for Duquesne. How about a 46-yard touchdown catch for West Virginia? And Duquesne, three and out. And now the Preston Fox, 22-yard touchdown catch. It has gone completely in a different direction. A perfect start. But Neil Brown has to be pleased. That message was received during the break. Uh, the players heard it loud and clear. <laughs> and they're putting on a show. Bounces into the end zone for a touchback. Kick goes into the end zone for the touchback. You gotta imagine Parentes and Duquesne are content getting 
the final 39 seconds of this one over and kind of getting a reset, although we won't take a traditional halftime because of the two-hour lightning delay. First and 10 for the Handoff to Clements. Got a yard. Second charge, time out of the half. West Virginia. West seconds. Virginia takes the timeout. West Virginia came out of last week against Penn State, Jay, and they lost the game, right? But they had a lot of things that they felt optimistic about, yeah. a lot of things that they thought went their way, and they were really close to being in that game late in the fourth quarter. And if you can kind of find that rhythm and, and get going for the rest of the year, it's a West Virginia team that might be able to make some things happen. They were encouraged, and that's a tough atmosphere. Penn State on the road at a night game, and they were – making plays out there and a couple things that could have gone their way didn't but if it did it would have been there right towards the end and there's some one-on-one -on -one matchups they're really pleased with on the offense and defensive line that showed them a lot in game one butts got stacked up on the run final charge time out of the hat west virginia 30 seconds so neil brown takes his final timeout. West Virginia, I just think it's going to be about continued improvement, staying consistent, but each week getting better, learning from your mistakes, how you want to attack your opponent. But last week against Penn State, I, I mean, they were disappointed because they thought they could have won that game if they would have cleaned up a few areas. It was there. A couple third and fourth downs that they didn't convert, a couple busts in the secondary. But well, that's against a team that many think could make the playoff in Penn State and West Virginia. Uh, their goal is to win that game. They're positive signs, but they were disappointed at the result. I just think for them, it's all right, moving forward now. That game's in the past. How are we going to get better? They handled that atmosphere really well, too. 110,000 yeah. people at Penn State for a night game. And they acted like they belonged. Mario Clements, again, right behind the line of scrimmage. The penetration from that defensive line led by Sean Martin. Oh, but Sean Martin is down on the ground. Sean Martin just pressed his man, threw him away, and then makes the tackle. Coming up in pain. It's good to see him walk off. Injury timeout. Allows a 10-second run off. Kane is elected to take a 10-second run-off. Reset the game clock to three seconds. Clock will start on my whistle. So that's the final play of the first half. 35 to 10 doesn't really indicate how close this first half was for a majority of them. It was, it was a fight early on, and back and forth, 14 to 10, and then after the break, West Virginia turned it on, and now a chance for both teams to reset. 21 unanswered for West Virginia after the lightning delay, and it's all Mountaineers up 35 to 10 at halftime. Start of the third quarter here after a very abbreviated halftime due to the nearly two hour lightning delay here in Morgantown. Duquesne won the toss to start the game they received. Now they kick it off in West Virginia up 25. Gets the football first. It has felt like two completely different games. In the second quarter, post rain slash lightning delay, West Virginia has three touchdowns. This offense, explosive. Whatever Neil Brown told the team during the break, continue that message because West Virginia has been flying high. Garrett Green, accurate throwing the ball. The wide receivers making plays. Everybody's stepping up. 
I mean, that is just crazy. The difference from before the delay until after. 195 total yards for West Virginia. Minus six for Duquesne. Here's a handoff on the first play. C.J. Donaldson still on his feet and carrying the entire defense with him out to the 40 for, tw for 14 yards. New quarterback in the game, too, for West Virginia. That's Nico Marchiol, the redshirt freshman from Arizona. They said they wanted to get him a lot of snaps yeah, today. And we knew that we'd see him get more experience. How about that run from Donaldson? Just that special ability refusing to go down. It's Donaldson once again zigzagging through the defense, took a hit and spun off of it for another first down. Donaldson's 238 pounds. He glides. He makes it look easy. He's a former tight end. Switching over to running back. Like usually it takes time to adjust, but not Donaldson. This is the numbers on Nico Marchiol. Threw for more than 8,000 yards in his high school career where he was an All-American and the Arizona Gatorade Player of the Year. Gianni Rizzo, the linebacker, is the one being stretched out right now for Duquesne. We will take the injury timeout with them. A minute into the third quarter, West Virginia with a couple first downs and trying to add on to this 25-point lead. We will stay here instead. Backup quarterback Nico Marchiol trying to orchestrate the offense now for West Virginia. Marchiol to throw, zips it over the middle, and a collision between Braham and the defensive back, C.J. Barnes. Barnes, nice job in coverage, just reading the eyes of Markiel. This is important experience for Markiel. First team offensive lines in the game, wide receivers, Donaldson. This is all the first team unit for him to come in here. He's going to have talent around him and play action pass, clean pocket. It's a better job by Barnes in the secondary. Markiel, this time the pocket not clean at all, and he gets dragged down by A.J. Ackerman. This was why it's so important to get game reps, to feel that pass rush, manipulate the pocket, and knowing when to get outside, when to step up. There's Ackerman, just an outstanding job closing in and making the play. That's completed near the 40-yard line. Jayshon Pope with the catch. It's a tough throw to the opposite sideline. Perfect placement. So fourth down offense staying on the field. Less than a yard to get. So they're going to look at it here to see if Ja'Shawn Polk did, in fact, get enough to get the first down. As it's called now, about a half-yard shot. Gary Green over on the sideline talking with Markiel. See here as the ball's caught. The left foot out of bounds. They marked it right at the 40. And I got to imagine that's going to stand. Yeah. The first down marker is at the 39 and a half. It's a good look. Yeah, so anticipating this call is going to stand. I think West Virginia comes out here. I think you can over. 
overturn that, but I think they'll come out here and go for it on fourth down. After further review, we're really on the field stand. Fourth down. So the call stands fourth and less than a yard coming up for Mark Eole and West Virginia's offense. West Virginia does have a fourth down conversion already today. West Virginia is so successful with the quarterback sneak last week against Penn State. Marco and shotgun. Need a half yard. Anderson up the middle right near the marker. I think they're marking him short. Jalen Anderson on the carry. Stopping by James Johnson. Oh, yeah. uh, initially, it looks like Duquesne's going to hold that defensive line staying low coming off the ball. The pad level, the jerseys in white, and then coming off the edge. Nice stick right in the line of scrimmage. Antonio Epps, watch 31 fly in here. Antonio Epps and Jaden Johnson who are in there for Duquesne's defense. We're about to see a measurement. Only needed a half yard, but based yeah. on the angles we're seeing, I don't think he got there. That's about as close as it gets. Short turnover on downs. Jerry Schmidt's defense gets the stop and one they needed after three straight touchdown drives by West Virginia. Something to build on. The defensive line coming through. Linebackers flowing over the top. And here's Epps again coming in off the edge, unblocked, combining with Jaden Johnson just on the sandwich tackle. That's when you figure West Virginia is going to win up front. Pretty good job by the offensive line. It was just the unblocked men coming in, flying in there to make the play. I'm a little surprised because Anderson's kind of that slashy guy that, you know, moves around his shifty when you've got Anderson, or Donaldson rather, who's 238 pounds. Surprised they didn't go to him. Yeah, Donaldson or quarterback sneak. Either one there. Parentes flips it off. It's caught. Keyshawn Brown shakes one. He's still going inside the 30 before he got chased down from behind by Malachi Ruffin. Great start to the drive by Duquesne. Keyshawn Brown here. Quick, easy screen. Let your wide receiver go to work. He is so tough to bring down. Uses the official there as a shield. Gets around him. Nice job on the offense. You know, safe play call there. Let your wide receiver get yards after the catch. Make it easy on Parentes. 24 yards on the screen pass. Sets up first down. Parentes wants to throw again. Can't get away from the sack. He gets brought down. Hershey McLaurin led the charge. And Jai Favres followed in behind. West Virginia has to rely on this pass rush this season. They need their front to win. They did it there. Multiple guys coming over in on the play, just disrupting the offensive line. Good job. Second down and 21. So after they got 24 yards on a screen pass to Brown, the next play is an 11-yard sack, and it sets Duquesne way behind the chains again. A Duquesne timeout right First before the snap. First timeout of the half. Duquesne. 30 seconds.
Duquesne second and 21 out of the timeout. West Virginia trying to get back to 500 after a week one loss to Penn State on the road last week. And then coming up after this, it's all power five teams the rest of the way. You got your rivalry, Pitt, who's down to Cincinnati right now, and then you're into the Big 12 season. Yeah, I mean, there's depth all throughout the league. Each game is going to have challenges with it. But West Virginia, I think you really have to get off to a good start. Finish off this game, and then two more home games. If you can get it rolling here at the beginning of the season, you'll have momentum that can carry you through. First of three home games in a row tonight, and then next week Pitt and Texas Tech to open up the Big 12 schedule. That's caught on second and 21 by Teddy Awful, and he's back to the original line of scrimmage to make this third down a manageable 10 yards to get. Rentes has a strong arm. Uh, this throw, there's secondary guys that are reading his eyes, trying to jump in front of the passing lanes. He has enough just to get it into Awful to make the play. DJ Powell hasn't had looks here. The guy tried to find a way to get number four involved at the top of the screen. He had the first touchdown of the game three minutes in, but haven't seen him since. They go deep down the middle looking for Brown, and it's broken up. Anthony Wilson had the coverage for West Virginia to bring up fourth down. Wilson, stride for stride, outstanding job, turning his head. He's watching the eyes and then turned around to break up the ball. That's exactly how you coach it, how you draw it up. The that coaching, was textbook. Yeah, the coaching staff is really going to like that when they watch film tomorrow. As far as he, how he handled it, he was patient and then turned around to knock it loose. Offense staying on the field on fourth down. Parentes swarmed and dropped. Duro Jaye with the sack, his second in as many weeks for the redshirt freshman. Yeah, there's no drop off with the second unit. This defensive line is dominant. Here they win on fourth down, another sack for the Mountaineers. The West Virginia offense takes over after a turnover on downs. They have scored 21 unanswered. Take a 35-10 lead. This is Jaheim White, the true freshman, breaking one tackle and dragging a couple down with him to the 44. Had a quad injury last week, could have played, but Neil Brown said, we didn't think it was fair to throw a true freshman into the mix against Penn State right away after not practicing all week. That pass is incomplete as they were looking for Jarrell Williams on the screen. Well, the coaches are high on White and what his potential is going to be in this offense. As Markiel throws it to the outside. Let's break up. It's Aiden Garns who had the hit immediately. He had a pick six on the second play of the game last week. All over the field, one of the leaders on the defensive end. Aggressive player. He's voted as just a team captain as a sophomore. Don't see that too much. Hand off to White. Open seam and he breaks loose. Across the 20 and he gets ushered out of bounds in the red zone. The freshman breaks off a big run before Tim Lowry chases him out. White has quickness, the vision, and then the home run ability. This is the point in the ball game where you want your offensive line just to take over. Win up front, manhandle your opponent, and then White, easy run down the sideline. 38 yards on the big run for Jaheim White. And he gets a few more here. A true freshman, but he came in as an early enrollee last January. So he's been with the program for almost a full year and kind of has that head start compared to most true freshmen. It's a huge advantage. If you come in during the summer compared to in January, you miss spring practice and really that time where you build chemistry with your teammates. And for him coming in here, number three guy on the depth chart, this is a strong running back room that has different talents with each guy. Markiel swings it out. This is Rodney Gallagher, gets a block, dives for the pylon. 
He lost the ball. Did it go all the way through the end zone or did it go out of bounds first? I think the initial signal is touchback that it went through the end yeah. zone. Relay on the field. The runner lost the ball inbounds. The ball went out of bounds through the end zone. Therefore, it's a touchback. First down, Duquesne. Wow. At the 20 yard line. Unfortunate for Gallagher, just trying to make a play, reach out, cross the goal line. Nearly another touchdown for West Virginia, but it's a touchback, and Duquesne gets the ball back. West Virginia working on 21 unanswered right now to take a 25-point lead. Could have been more because Rodney Gallagher reaching out was about a half yard from the pylon when the ball slipped out of his hand. He was that close to a touchdown. Instead, a touchback, and Duquesne's offense gets the ball. Yeah, you feel for him. The freshman trying to make a play, just reaching out there and let go of it half a yard short. And it was tough for him. One thing Duquesne has done well today is take advantage of miscues from West Virginia. And that ball sails well high of DJ Powell, the intended target. A guy that you're wanting to see Duquesne get involved a little bit more. He's the number one receiver for Duquesne. Since the touchdown three minutes into the game, we haven't seen him. Yeah, I mean, he's the guy with his length, athleticism. He can win matchups. With the body control that he's shown, he can box out defenders. They just have to find more ways to get him looks in the passing game. Second down and long, quickly swung out to the near sideline. It's Keyshawn Brown, who with a second effort gets a couple yards, but it's still third and long for Duquesne. The secondary for West Virginia has been physical tonight. There hasn't been missed tackles out of that group. A couple miscommunications on the back end that cleaned that up. They are a physical group, whether it's tackling or shedding blocks out of the perimeter. Third and long. Parentes sets, fires. Great one on one coverage from Keyshawn Cobb. Fourth and eight. Much, much better job in coverage. Second quarter on. And right now, kind of a sense of confidence in that back end, the way they've been covering. They've rolled the ones and the twos. And there haven't been those mistakes that we saw early on in the game. Another three and out from this West Virginia defense. Like you mentioned, secondary has played really well tonight. Preston Fox backtracking to the 29. Great return from him. Hopping across midfield. A late flag comes in at the end of the play. For the time being, it was a 23-yard return for Preston Fox. During the return, holding number six on the return team. Ten yards for spotted foul. First down. Jacoby Spells gets called for the holding on the return. So that negates what was a really nice return from Preston Fox. So second drive for Nico Marchiol, the redshirt freshman. Who Neil Brown said he has all the talent in the world. We just need him to get out of his own head. He overthinks things too much. If he goes out there and just plays, man, he can be really good. This is valuable time for him. And right now, they're giving him opportunities to throw the ball down the field. Again, first team unit still in there. They want to build him up. You have to have depth at the quarterback position. Jaheim White runs into a wall of defenders for Duquesne. They started him in this third quarter. It was 25-point lead for West Virginia at the break. Garrett Green's day was done early, and Nico Markiel takes over, and got to think he's going to get a majority of the snaps in the second half. They might give Sean Boyle the third stringer some near the end. 
Marchio rolling out left. Turns the corner, has some space, has the first down. Very similar to Gary Green. Marchio has the ability to hurt you with his legs. And I like how he is patient looking down the field, trying to find an open man from the coverage held up he decided to take off and that's a dimension that the coaching staff really likes with his game is using his legs and staying patient looking down the field white again he's broken off a couple big runs in this third quarter and he's got a first down he ran for nearly 2,000 yards last year as a senior in high school he has that ability to break loose. Yeah, and he just hides behind the big offensive line. And then the quickness, the burst, once he sees the whole develop. Screen pass, it's caught. Deshaun Polk to the 39. West Virginia getting different guys involved and Cole Taylor only two catches the tight end. He can impact the game in other ways. He was the one that held up there on the outside with the block. Six guys have at least one reception for West Virginia tonight. Mr. Kane is challenging the catch on the field. Mr. Kane wants that to be looked over to see if it was actually a catch by Polk or if it hit the ground. Correction. Correction, replay, replay. stop the game stop before the coach called a timeout. Previous plays under further review. Well, one way or another, we're gonna look at this play. Hope get the hands under yeah. it, or was it incomplete? That's a tough angle because of the block right in front. Cole Taylor, six foot seven, blocking the view. That it might have bounced in. in. I don't know if there's enough to overturn yeah, right. it. That's the thing. Right. Yeah. Looked like it skipped. Yeah, I think it skipped in there too. But again, calling the field was catch, so you got to have clear and concise evidence to be able to overturn this. There's Cole Taylor. He loves blocking defensive backs. Yeah, he does. <laughs> it's, a, it's a lot nicer than a linebacker or DN. That's tough because I, I think it looks like it skips in, but. It looks like it skips, but do you know that? Right, for exactly. Sure? And, and it's got to be 100%. Chad Scott, the offensive coordinator. Nico Markiel. So we're awaiting the call here, but I think from that last angle, yeah. it, it looked like it skipped in there. But again, need After indisputable review, evidence. The ball touched the ground before the receiver possessed it. Therefore, it's incomplete pass. It'll be third down and five the 39 yard line. Well, there you have it, incomplete. Bounced into Polk, brings up third down. I think there's confusion between is this second down or third down, and it should be second down. 
our crew's on top of it. You can see they've got second and ten all ready to go. It's everyone on yeah. the field who's trying to figure well, things and, and out. Neil Brown was yelling second down too. <laughs> Correction. Second and ten, the 43-yard line, position five on the left hash. There we go. Second down. All right. Let's play ball. Now we're set. Markiel had trouble with the snap. There are a couple flags that come in. A short gain on second down. We'll have to check what the flag is. Illegal shift on the offense. Two players in motion at the same time and not resetting. Five yard penalty, still second down. So make it second and 15 for West Virginia with a couple guys in motion. You'll see on the outside, it's Cole Taylor running out in the formation. And then also in the backfield movement as well with White. That'd been a pretty clean game for West Virginia, but now they've got four penalties in about the last quarter of play. Marchio whistles it to the sideline, pulled in by Cole Taylor. This match on the outside, NFL talent. You have Taylor lined up with the defensive back. Go to him every single time. Look at that radius. It's that big body, six foot seven, just reaching over the top and plucking that ball away. Third catch for the LSU transfer, Cole Taylor. Markiel looking that way again, just out of the reach of Taylor. And pressure in the lap of Markiel. Uh, Taylor was there if the ball was accurate. There's the pressure coming up right off the edge, unblocked. Here's Taylor stretching out for it almost. That ball would have been about a foot shorter. He would have strided into the end zone. Instead, it's second and 10. Another red zone trip for West Virginia. Hand off to White. Burst into the end zone and a touchdown for Jaheim White, the freshman. Touchdown. 19 yards on the score, and it's 27 straight for the Mountaineers. Some freshmen really stepping up tonight. Clement, and here's White. Staying patient. Zone play, they're off the left side. Outstanding block on the outside from the left tackle, Nick Malone. Getting his pad level low, hands inside, driving his man around the edge. And White, the young freshman, easy trot into the end zone. Make it 28 consecutive for West Virginia. Jaheim White, first touchdown of the career for the freshman, and it is all Mountaineers in the home opener. This game can be broken up into two games, pre-lightning delay and post-lightning delay, because this was a 14-10 game, Jay, but four touchdowns in the last five drives for the Mountaineers have them running away. Uh, West Virginia's looked amazing after the delay and what they're able to do with their balance on the offensive end. West Virginia's rushed for 223 yards, thrown for 292, and they protected the football. Garrett Green, four touchdowns, zero interceptions. That's the key. And the good news for West Virginia is we just showed you their schedule a little bit ago. 
they shape up well in the Big 12. They play all four of the newcomers to the Big 12 this year. They do. And, and I mean, you look at that schedule, manageable. If they can get it rolling, backyard brawl next week, that's a big one. But getting into conference play, you get Texas Tech at home to begin Big 12 play. Now 0 4 in the pass. They got to turn the tide here and get a win against the Red Raiders. No Texas, no Kansas State. The top two teams yeah. in the preseason poll for the Big 12 as well. And at Oklahoma, but West Virginia had success last year with the victory over the Sooners. So, you know, it sets up well. They just have to get off to a good start. Parentes heaves it downfield. He was looking for Keyshawn Brown, but it was a little too far. <laughs> When you were looking at that, you saw at 18th ranked Oklahoma, but going to the bounce house, UCF, that might be one of the toughest road games they have. That's one of the newcomers yeah, in the league. It's going to be difficult, and especially with the tempo that UCF is going to play with on the offensive end, and you imagine it's still going to be hot in Orlando at that time, and that's a newcomer to the league that's picked eighth in the preseason poll, a dangerous club because of that great offense with UCF. Also, I think their defense is going to be much improved, and they'll be a force on that side of the ball as well. UCF just beat Boise State, by the way, on a 40-yard walk-off field goal. They were down one, end up walking it off to beat Boise State. That was on the road. Yeah. Colton Boomer. That's a great name for a kicker, by the way. <laughs> Got some boom in that leg. <laughs> Here's Parentes to throw on third down. Connects with his target. That was Joey Isabella right near the marker. And it's enough for a first down. And Isabella just finds a way to get open. Preseason all-league pick. The brother of Andy Isabella, yep. former UMass and now Arizona Cardinal wide receiver. Second round pick. Parentes hands it off to Taj Butts. Got stacked up after a couple yards. And going back to Joey Isabella, Jerry Schmidt, the head coach, said that's the hardest worker on our team. He said during COVID when we weren't really practicing, you couldn't really do anything, I'd be on campus and at 6.30 a.m. every single day, he saw Isabella out working, running routes with one of his quarterback friends to get work in during COVID. It's a different level of commitment. And when you have somebody like Isabella that wants it that bad, that's going to put in the time and the effort, it's contagious with your teammates, with other guys on the team. When you see somebody working that hard, you want to make sure you pick up your level of intensity and work ethic. Two yards on the run. That was Edward Robinson, the freshman's first carry today for Duquesne. Look at this for Duquesne. Based in Pittsburgh, right, but 11 of the 13 coaches on this staff from the Pittsburgh area. And when we talked to the coaching staff this week, they talked about how close-knit and family-like this coaching staff was. There's a special camaraderie. And this is a group that, you said it, they're so close, their families are tight, and they've really kind of grown up together in the coaching profession. And uh, they're a group that's very well respected by their players. What a football town Pittsburgh is, too, of course, with the Steelers. Parentes rolling right, throws across his body, and it's caught. Inside the 25 for Teddy Awful. Shakes a tackle, stiff arms, and finally gets yanked out of bounds at the 16. A third and seven conversion for Parentes, who made something happen on a 37-yard throw. Parentes is outstanding throwing on the run. So this is a strong throw, and there's Awful just sitting in the middle of the field. Nice job reading the zone coverage, sitting down for your quarterback. Parentes looking end zone. It's caught by Awful for a touchdown.
Back-to-back -back big plays for Teddy Awful, the junior wide receiver. And here through the eyes of Parentes. I mean, nowhere to go with that ball. Perfect job from Cutter there in coverage. Awful turned around the ball, hit him right in the hands. Accurate ball placement from Parentes and Awful wins in one-on-one -on -one coverage. Snaps 28 consecutive points by West Virginia on far and away the best drive of the day for Duquesne. And Bruzdowitz connects on the extra point. Big drive for Teddy Awful. Yeah, Awful just kind of striding through. And this coverage, I mean, outstanding from West Virginia. That ball had to be perfect. And Parentes falls away. It's an awesome throw, and Awful gets that right foot in bounds for the touchdown. Seven plays, 75 yards, but most of it came from Teddy Awful. So kind of getting back to that story about the Pittsburgh ties and how close everyone is on that staff. You talk about Luke Smith, his uncle Danny, the special teams coordinator for the Steelers. I mean, so many different connections to the city of Pittsburgh from this Duquesne team in Pittsburgh. Yeah, and, and that's like a special community they have with the relatives and everybody in coaching. And the coaching staff said, hey, if you're from Pittsburgh, you're going to have something to do with football. You better play it, coach it, be an equipment manager, do something with football. But I think there's a bond and there's a sense of respect when you have a coaching staff from the same area. They grew up with the same roots and values and they know the way of life in the Pittsburgh area. And a lot of pride within that coaching staff. Kick goes out of bounds. So West Virginia with great starting field position. Free kick out of bounds. By rule, the ball be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. Mountaineers just had a touchdown drive last time they were out on the field. And Nico Marchio back out there, the backup quarterback. Played in a few games last year, but not enough to consider it a full season. So he still got his red shirt and now a red shirt freshman. Handoff and a good run on first down to start the drive. DJ Oliver on his first carry of the night for six yards. Good to see this second unit, this offensive line, getting push up front, really picking up where the starters left off. And you don't want to see any drop in play. Even when the reserves come in the game, this is valuable experience for them. And they've got to keep up with that same level of intensity that the starters had. And there's Oliver again. Yeah, this is an opportunity, right? You're going to see a lot of the second, third, maybe even fourth stringers get out there and get an opportunity to play and, and get snaps. But it's important for them. It's yeah. not just garbage time, but it's opportunity for them to be able to make a statement. Well, I think the coaches were excited for an opportunity for some of these younger players to see action tonight. And I think they're pleased also with the depth they have, something that they believe is really going to pay off throughout the season. West Virginia lets the third quarter clock wind down to an end. Headed to the fourth quarter here in Morgantown. Neil Brown and company are 15 minutes away from their first win of the season. Garrett Green singing along to Sweet Caroline as we head to the fourth quarter, and it's been a sweet day for him. 240 yards through the air, four touchdowns, and his day's been done since halftime. He's been able to relax, coach up the other players, and biggest thing for him tonight, protecting the football, zero interceptions. Handoff on the first play of the fourth quarter to DJ Oliver. DJ Oliver along here. I think they're going to be happy what they got out of Garrett Green today. He's got to be pleased with his performance, what he watches on film tomorrow. 
solid performance, and I like how he played loose, Noah. After the weather delay, it just looked like he was like, hey, I'm going out there. I'm going to take shots, trust my teammates, and throw the ball deep down the field. He was looking downfield for Jeremiah Aaron. It was incomplete. Great one-on-one -on -one coverage. The fans wanted a flag. Here it is, no safety help over the top. There's some contact. And Carson never really turned the head around. Yeah. But regardless, incomplete. Oliver gets a couple yards. Third and long coming up for the Mountaineers. Markio wanting to go to the air on third and eight. Fires on the run and through the hands of Jeremiah Aaron. Fourth down coming up. Jeremiah Aaron. Well, Garrett Green, we told you, 240, four touchdowns, a 240.9 QBR. You have any quarterbacks you played with that had a 240 QBR? No, I don't know if I had anybody that had a 120, even half of that. <laughs> I mean, that's that's a pretty darn uh, good day there. And also, too, running the football, 33 yards on the ground. He did it all. He's healthy. I'm able to watch here in the second half and get ready for the backyard brawl next week. The punt is touched up near the 20-yard line. Duquesne offense takes over after this, down 25 early in the fourth. Early fourth quarter, Jerry Schmidt and his Dukes down 25 against West Virginia. And a game that they put up a pretty good fight. It was 14-10 halfway through the second quarter, and then West Virginia just went on a run where they scored 28 consecutive. Opening play of the drive. This is Clements, and he spins down to the 27. It's a different world, the FBS and the FCS level in terms of scholarships, Jay. 85 scholarships at the FBS, take away 20 at the FCS, but then even at the NEC level, they only get 45 compared to the 85 at West Virginia and the FBS level. Yeah, I mean, it's just, uh, that's a huge difference. I mean, it's 40 scholarships, a huge discrepancy. And, you know, the biggest thing that, that I've noticed in this game is how competitive they played. You know, even now, they're still playing hard, especially early on in the game, though. This was a close ball game in the first quarter. And Duquesne doesn't even give out the full 45 allotted. They give out 40, so 45 differential. Deep down the field, and it's picked off. A great return all the way down to 22 by Wilcox. A 32-yard interception return for Wilcox. And West Virginia's got the ball near the red zone. West Virginia, total control of this game. Here's the blitz. Ben Cutter up the middle, getting the pressure. And Wilcox just reading the eyes, jumping in front to make the play, and then looking for a touchdown. Here's Ben Cutter, the star freshman. Defensive coaching staff talked to us about getting him reps in the game. And him coming through with the big hit, and Wilcox taking advantage of it with the interception. Avery Wilcox, the redshirt sophomore, with a 32-yard return off the interception as well. Great starting spot for Markiel. First play, dumps it out into flat. It's caught by Jaheim White, who shakes one and is inside the 15. Jaheim White. Put that hard hat on, go to work. That's what Avery Wilcox just did. 
Burkeel here. Key to finish this off with a touchdown inside the red zone. Hand off to White. Has an open seam, dragging a defender with him down to the six for a first down. With the emergence of White. It's that competitive spirit in the running back room. It's going to be a key for this group. You have Anderson, Donaldson, and White splitting carries. They can stay fresh. Only five foot eight. Look at the way he finishes off that run. Powerful back, low center of gravity. On a first and goal. White again, and he is stood up by about four different Dukes defenders. Don't get us wrong, Donaldson and Anderson will be the two guys that have a majority of the carries this year for West Virginia, but Jaheim White is a great guy to have to be able to give him a couple, give those two guys a break every once in a while. He brings a different dimension. We talked about hiding behind the offensive line. Right around five foot eight, he can spring out big runs, give those guys a rest. Also, you can play with two backs, split him out in the slot. He has good hands, so different ways you can use this running back room with their talents. It's DJ Oliver now after Jaheim White gets a break. It's his first college game ever, too. Didn't play last week against Penn State, and now you're talking about nine touches, 89 yards, a touchdown. Really productive day for him. And it's about making the most of your opportunity. Uh, this is tough today with the weather delay, having to go and sit in the locker room for an hour and 54 minutes and come out here and play. They're taking advantage of it, though, and their number's called. They're doing their best, and I think the coaching staff is really going to like the film, especially these young players coming in here in the second half. Oliver again gets an extra push to the goal line. And they mark him down inside the one. Fourth and goal, got to keep the offense on the field, right? Keeping the offense out on the field. I think this is a running play right up the middle. You tell your offensive line, we're scoring a touchdown here. It's going to be the field. running behind you. The runner being tackled short of the goal line. He's under further review. Get one more look at it. to see if Oliver was down short of the goal line. That was the ruling on the field. Oh, that's touchdown. Yeah, I couldn't see the knee at all. And I'm not sure we're gonna get an angle that really will be able to see where his knee was. You're right, the ball certainly crosses yeah, the goal line. It's just it. a matter of was the knee down or where is the knee at because it's impossible to see. Well, it's all about the evidence. Evidence is mutable. There it is, the ball's across the goal line. Bodies everywhere, though. <laughs> So tough to tell where that knee is. Again, elbow goes down right there. Balls across the goal line, but again, you're seeing no part of the lower body. After further review, the ruling on the field stands, fourth down. Yeah, I thought that's probably what we would get. Call stands. Makes it fourth and goal inside the one. It's DJ Oliver, the running back that stays in there. Luke Hamilton, the fullback, comes in. Kept by Markiel, he's in for a touchdown.
Short drive after the interception, just 20 yards, six plays. Danny King with the extra point after the one yard touchdown run by Nico Markiel. All Mountaineers reason to celebrate in the home opener for the Mountaineers. All Mountaineers with less than 10 minutes to play up 49-17 in the home opener. And Duquesne's offense coming back out with the football to start the drive after the touchback. Well, there's Zach Frazier, not only an All-American center here for West Virginia, but a guy who won four high school wrestling state championships, lost twice total in his entire career. I wouldn't want to get in the bat with him. <laughs> not, not a chance. The winningest wrestler in Marion County, West Virginia history, 159 and two, four-time heavyweight champion. He was standing on the top of that a lot. Loss of a couple on the opening handoff. And they think he's also an NFL guy, too. What he's able to do out on a football field, a lot of those skills translated over from wrestling. The toughness, the agility, the quickness, the use of your hands. That's all in play when he's out here playing ball and going to the next level. Uh, he's very highly thought of. Top round guy, one of the best centers in the country. He can get to the second level. He can use his leverage, and he is physical. He's going to push the line of scrimmage, and the biggest thing is he's a leader up front. Another handoff to Robinson. He had nowhere to go. Lost even a couple more. Backup quarterback is in there for Duquesne now, by the way, and Matt Robinson. There's mom and dad hanging out. Sporting the 54. So Robinson played a little bit last week in a blowout win for Duquesne as well. Threw five passes as a Fresno State transfer. Third different school in his career. He started his career at Illinois. Now backpedaling throws, connects with Robinson. Robinson has the speed. He gets clipped out of bounds across the 30. Brings up fourth and short. For Robinson transferring in from Fresno State. Just another experienced quarterback for this new team. Offense behind Parentes. That's a strong quarterback. He's just at Fresno State for a year. Was at Illinois for four years. Another Duquesne punt. Tyler Evans lets it bounce. And Duquesne saying somebody on West Virginia touched it? No, I didn't think so. Final 741 to play in Morgantown. West Virginia up big. Zach Frazier, not only an All-American offensive lineman and a four-time wrestling high school state champion, but oh yeah, Jay, he also builds all of these too, mainly out of recycled wood. What a talented dude. Amazing. I want to put in a request. Maybe he can build me something <laughs> <Right>. as well. <laughs> that is awesome. The, the, the baseball bats and balls was actually something that was made for Garrett Green's dad, the starting quarterback for West Virginia. I mean, he's one of those guys that you have a feeling no matter what he tries, he's probably yeah. incredibly good at it. It's just, it's awesome because you see these guys out on the field on Saturday, and then there's a whole nother story about their off-field activities, right. their interests, and, and what they do in the community. And he's a special guy. Marky old deep shot downfield, incomplete. Yeah, it was Tyler Evans Evan. that he was looking for down the field. 
and it's not just Frazier, but it's also Tomas Remack as well. He does the same exact thing. Yeah, they play next to each other on the offensive line and share a lot of the same interest. And, you know, again, I, I want to put in a request with Tomas here and, and see what he can make us. But uh, just uh, so cool to see what these guys are involved in. Big run here from Markiel, but he stepped on the sideline. Did get the first down. And the thing with Remack, everything that he builds as well, Jay, he gets advice and gets kind of the approval from Zach Frazier. He <laughs> yeah. checks in with him. Hey, what do you think of this? Do you like this? They check each other's work. <laughs> Teachers smiling everywhere, yeah, right? Check exactly, your work. Exactly. <laughs> First down carry for Jaheim White across midfield. Look at this bar. I mean, Tomas Remack made this with a bunch of recycled wood. I wonder how long that took him. Oh, my goodness. An entire off season, I would think. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Probably took him a couple days. <laughs> Take me a lifetime. Markiel on the run, completes the pass. It's a first down. C.J. Cole, the redshirt freshman wide receiver with his first catch of the year for seven yards. And Gary Green down on the sideline is the biggest cheerleader. He is going wild, cheering on his teammates, sprinting up and down the sidelines. And good to see these reserves getting some action. Got to love that from your starting quarterback, don't you? It's leadership, and, and that's what the coaches talked about for him is just the love his teammates have for him and how they'll follow his lead. DJ Oliver jumping through that defensive line down to 37. And that coaching staff said that Garrett Green's leadership has grown tremendously from the end of yeah. last season until the start of this year. And that's a huge aspect is that growth from the quarterback position because you need your quarterback to be the guy. Look who's meeting Markiel. That's well, Green right there going to talk to him, tutor him, and talk about what he's seeing out on the field. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Green is the first one off the field to meet Mark Yill and talk with him. He might have been saying something along the lines of, did you see that bar that Tomas Remack built? <laughs> yeah, 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 I don't know if he was talking about what he saw on the field because they were smiling, so you're probably right. He was talking about the bar he built. <laughs> said, man, are you hungry? Where are we going to dinner tonight? Yeah, they're, they're having a side conversation for sure. It's Davia Gabor, the cornerback who was shaken up for Duquesne. You know, back to Green, though, you know, I, I think a big key for him was a lot of positives last week against Penn State, but hitting your layups, third and fourth down critical throws. Well, today, I, I think he just played with a sense of confidence and letting it air out, going to Clement, throwing the ball deep. It just looked like he was relaxed in the passing game, accurate placement, no turnovers. Uh, everything was clicking, and I think this is really going to be a big boost for him going into the backyard brawl next week. Yeah, they got a big one against Pitt right here in Morgantown on ABC. Primetime game Saturday night. That'll be a great test for West Virginia. Markiel swings it out. Back-to-back -back completions. There is a flag on the play. Twenty-four and zero all time is West Virginia against FCS teams, and in the last four years outscoring no them by more than two hundred points. Second down. second down. So no penalty. Wave it off. Bring up second down. Correction. 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 Third, Correction. Down. Third, down. third down. Third down. Make it third down. These are the games you got to take care of, though. Take care of business. Come out here and be dominant. Didn't start off the way West Virginia would have liked. How do you respond? And I think Neil Brown's got to be very pleased as this game progressed after the break. 
the message was well received. Just a different level of intensity for his team. And you know, for him here, three game homestand, game one, you're gonna get the victory, two more big ones coming up. Yeah, Pitt next week, Big 12 opener, Texas Tech the week after that. It was 14-10 going into that lightning delay and coming out of it, three play touchdown drive. Then the defense forced a three and out and another three play touchdown drive. Yeah, and some of the questions from last week is you know, secondary play and then who's going to step up in the wide receiver room? Yeah. Well, I, I think some of those questions tonight, at least tonight, were answered. Fourth down, Markio whistles it in for a first down. <laughs> CJ Cole with his second catch of this fourth quarter for 11 yards. Devin Carter, the number one receiver for West Virginia, didn't even play tonight. Yeah, and their number one guy didn't see the field. So who's going to step up? It was Clement and a host of others as well. Seven different guys have a reception tonight. Here's a handoff. Jaheim White breaking a tackle and dives down near the 10. 11 yards, another first down for West Virginia, who's just chewing the clock down below four minutes. Wasn't perfect tonight, right? West Virginia still has some room to grow, but I yeah. think they're going to be happy with how the home opener went. Well, a win is always a great feeling. And for this team, just the importance of getting off to a good start. The result wasn't what you wanted at Penn State, but those positives were there. Now, can you expand on those, get better? They showed tonight they can do it. And now, just the process of trying to go 1-0 and each week. This team, though, a lot of young players stepping up into more prominent roles tonight. They took advantage of those opportunities. And when you can have a quarterback playing loose and confident, protecting the football, strong offensive line, strong defensive line, you're going to give yourself a chance. 607 yards of total offense for the Mountaineers. And a chance to put a cap on this night. Another carry for Oliver down to the five. Next five games coming up for West Virginia. Backyard brawl, ABC one week from tonight, then Texas Tech at home, then you go on the road for the first time in Big 12 play at TCU at Houston, home against Oklahoma State. I think for Neil Brown and company, those are all winnable games. All winnable games. And the brawl next week, what an atmosphere it's going to be. And you, if you can get that victory against your rival, wow. Here goes Oliver one more time into the end zone for the exclamation point on this night for the Mountaineers. The story for West Virginia tonight has been the offense. And this is a way to finish off the ball game. Strong offensive line play, getting the push up front, and then the running game, which has been balanced all night. Depth in that room really paying off. A nice job getting another touchdown. Fourth rushing touchdown of the night for West Virginia on a 12-play extended drive. 42 to 7, West Virginia since the lightning delay. All Mountaineers. Final 208 in Morgantown. Home opener for West Virginia has gone the way they've wanted it to. 56 17. They're two minutes away from moving to 1 and 1 on the season and welcoming in their rival pit next week on ABC. So Duquesne's offense is going to get one last chance to try to do something. The offensive line for West Virginia is probably their strength on the entire offensive unit. And Chad Scott, 
the offensive coordinator, calls his offensive line the Orcas. How great is that? <laughs> Isn't that awesome? <laughs> One of the best nicknames in college football. I feel like offense alignment, that's like the most popular group on a team. Everybody loves yes. the O-line. They just like get guys to gravitate. They always have a corner of the locker room. Everybody comes to hang out with them. <laughs> popular guys on the team and they've been really Whoa. good tonight too 304 yards of rushing behind the orcas they're all, all the orcas are going to get a game ball <laughs> they better and off to Edward i don't know if they're always the most popular guys on the team but they better be the best friends of every Nine running back exactly running backs got to give them some love didn't Neil Brown tell us yesterday when we were yeah. meeting with him that C.J. Donaldson took the offensive line out to dinner Thursday night? He did, yeah. yeah. We should go out to dinner with them also. I don't want to foot the bill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and at this hour of night, past 11 p.m., I'm not sure anything's open to go to dinner yeah. right now. Robinson gets the carry for Duquesne here, gets a couple yards. Well, an offensive line go out to They don't leave with one play. No. Especially if somebody else is paying for it. C.J. Donaldson's taking him out. I mean, Better the, believe it. The, the over-under is two and a half plates, and usually it's on the over. You hit the over in the media room today on the amount of plates you I ate, did. didn't you? I did. It's not to call you out. <laughs> I'm not proud saying, of that, saying. but I did. <laughs> I went I, back for seconds I on saw the mac you and sneak, cheese. I saw you sneak in some mac and cheese, though. <laughs> uh, there's nothing sneaky was, about it. Was it. A I quick. filled the plate with <laughs> yeah. mac and cheese a couple different times. Quick return trip. <laughs> hey, we had an hour and 54-minute lightning delay, all right? You got to do something, <laughs> and eating was at the top of my list. <laughs> this West Virginia defensive line, it doesn't matter if the second and third stringers are in there or not. They are playing to the whistle in a game they're up 56-17. Yeah, playing hard, and West Virginia is really going to be pleased with this film that they're going to watch tomorrow. A big win. Protect your own turf. Come out here and win in a dominant fashion in Duquesne. We'll head to Coastal Carolina next week. Positives they can take away, but for Neil Brown, momentum going into the backyard route. West Virginia wins the home opener. Didn't get off to a great start. It was 7-0 Duquesne. And a 14-10 lead, but it was all West Virginia after the lightning delay. A big thank you to our entire crew tonight here in Morgantown, led by John Wilson and Major Howe, our producer and director, for Jay Sunholter and the rest of our phenomenal crew here in Morgantown. I'm Noah Reed saying good night. West Virginia wins the home opener by a final score of 56 to 17 over Duquesne, and the Mountaineers have a big one next week, welcoming in Pitt on ABC Saturday Night Primetime.